Well, good afternoon to you and welcome to Thought for the Day. I just want to start by reading to you from Acts uh, and chapter 13 and beginning at verse 38. It says this, Brothers, listen. In this man, Jesus, there is forgiveness for your sins. Everyone who believes in him is freed from all guilt and declared right with God. Some think the Jewish law could never do. Amen. Well, before moving here five years ago, I worked in the parish of West Yule, uh, and the church that I uh, was vicar of was called All Saints. Uh, and we lived there and worked there for about uh, 10 years. In fact, uh, all my three children kind of grew up through that church. And in many ways, they see that area uh, as their actual hometown, even till to this day, even though we come from Bournemouth uh, as a family. But the other thing about living in that particular area was that we were near an adventure park called Chesington uh, World of Adventures. And I'm sure many of you have heard of uh, that theme park. and I'm sure that many of you have been along uh, to it. For us, we were only about sort of four uh, or five miles away from it. So every year it would be this kind of pilgrimage that we would go uh, to Chesington World of Adventures. And I loved it because actually it really felt like you were going into a completely different world, even though it was only a few uh, miles from where we lived. And of course, the kids, uh, they absolutely loved it, uh, particularly when they uh, made a new ride uh, available. The other thing about Chesington, which kind of makes it unique compared to other theme parks, is that it has a zoo in it as well. And so you can go on all the rides and enjoy all that fun, but when you want a bit of downtime and relax, you can, of course, uh, go and, and wander around the zoo. And the favourite part of the zoo for me was the big cat enclosures. Uh, I used to love uh, walking uh, around that area and seeing all those those wild uh, sort of wild cats. Uh, my favourites uh, were the tigers and, of course, uh, the lion. And I was always so impressed with that lion. Every time I seemed to, to go to that particular area, uh, I always found that the, the male lion would be sat on this huge rock with his big mane, uh, looking incredibly uh, impressive. But as I was uh, thinking about thought for the day, I was reflecting actually uh, on that, that particular experience of seeing uh, the big cats, or well, the last time that I actually saw them. And I remembered actually feeling quite sad because whilst this lion I was looking at looked incredibly dangerous and impressive in many ways it wasn't truly a lion and what do I mean by that well a lion is yes you know physically impressive powerful has a huge mane uh, if it's a male uh, and, and, and it's very uh, threatening when you look at it but this lion with all that stuff still wasn't perhaps truly a lion because a lion is a creature that needs to have freedom it needs to be able to to roam where it wants it needs to be ferocious and and fierce and dangerous not in a cage but outside of it its purpose therefore is to go and hunt it loves hunting and and, and catching uh, all the sort of wildebeest and other creatures that lions uh, will actually eat to be a true lion then he needed or needs freedom but in that particular cage he was only a lion in part and so i kind of felt sorry for him really because i'm sure in his lion brain he was longing to be able to get out and just be free uh, to be what he was born to be a lion now we're in this period uh, of looking forward towards Pentecost, aren't we? Uh, we've been celebrating the Ascension and we're sort of joining uh, with the disciples in that uh, sort of upper room as we, as we wait for Pentecost, as they were waiting uh, coming for the coming uh, of the Holy Spirit. And in many ways, at that, this particular moment in time, before the coming of the Holy Spirit, they in a sense were caged. They weren't truly being what they needed to be. It wasn't until that coming uh, of the Holy Spirit who freed them and allowed them to go out and be truly what they're called to be, which was God's 
people building God's kingdom and leading people to come to know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. It wasn't until Pentecost that they were freed to be able uh, to do that. But what about us today? What is our cages? What is hemming us in a bit like that lion in his cage? What is holding us back from being truly what we're meant to be? I guess that's unique for all of us and it's a challenge for every single one of us, including me. We all, I guess, could say have Achilles heels. And there are things often in our lives that, that hold us back and almost restrain us uh, from having that freedom in Jesus uh, that we have. And maybe during this time of reflection, as we're looking to that moment uh, that the freedom of the Holy Spirit will bring the church at Pentecost, maybe we should be asking God to sift us, you know, and, and look into our own hearts and get us to think about actually what things do we need to put right with God? What areas of our lives do we need to sort out so that we can have that freedom that we have? You know, that passage uh, I read to you, use that word free. We are free in Jesus Christ. We are no longer condemned. The law no longer has power over us. Which really kind of brings me uh, to my next point, which is actually sometimes we sit there feeling, well, we can't serve God because we're not good enough or we haven't done this or, or that. And whilst, yes, as I say, we do need to sort things out in our lives, the truth is we're forgiven anyway. There is really nothing holding us back from serving God other than our own selves. We sometimes, in a sense, bind ourselves when really we have freedom to, to do what God has called us to do. That's not to say that we can just live how we like and say we're Christians. Of course, we should always uh, be working things out in our hearts. We should always be trying uh, to draw closer to God and to become uh, more like Jesus. But that's a, a lifetime uh, journey. Uh, and when no one's ever going to be perfect. So don't hold yourself back. Let's not hold ourselves back with a sense of guilt uh, and foreboding that oh, I'm just not good enough. The truth is, and that passage I read to you makes it very clear, we are free in Jesus Christ and the law can no longer condemn us. For me, that is wonderful news. Well, I'm just going to stop my thought there and I'm just going to now uh, bring our time to a conclusion uh, with uh, some prayers. So let's, uh, let's pray. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the freedom uh, that we have in, in Jesus Christ. We thank you that uh, sin can no longer condemn us. The, the law can no longer accuse us of not being good enough. Because the truth is, Lord, we're never going to be good enough. It's only because of what your son Jesus Christ did for us. And we thank you for the freedom uh, that brings to each one of us. We thank you that we can boldly come before the throne of heaven and pray to you right now, not because of us, but because of your son, uh, Jesus Christ. And so I just want to celebrate that uh, right now at this time of prayer. We also thank you, God, that you are an amazing God, that you created all this amazing world uh, that we see around us. At this time when the sun is out and shining and we're enjoying all this lovely, uh, gorgeous weather, Lord, it reminds us of the beauty of creation. It reminds us uh, of what a creative and powerful God you are and how that you have provided for all of us. And so, Lord, we just want to say thank you for that. However, Lord, our hearts are, hard, are heavy at times, particularly during this uh, time uh, of lockdown. Lord, we are living in insecure times, times when none of us really quite know what it's going to be like uh, in the next month or the months ahead. <clears> oh <throat> Lord, our government is now planning to bring us out of uh, lockdown. And even they are struggling at times to quite know uh, the best uh, way forward. And so, Lord, we do pray uh, for our government. Oh Lord, so often we will have our own views and opinions on whether the government is doing a, a good job or a bad job. But Lord, they are there and they have that responsibility. And we as Christians need to pray for our governments. And so, Lord, we, we raise Boris Johnson and, and his cabinet and all those who are seeking to lead this country forward uh, into a prosperous future. Oh Lord, these are incredibly difficult times uh, for our leaders. And we just pray, therefore, that you will give them 
uh, great wisdom, that wisdom uh, of Solomon. And so we offer our government uh, to you this day. We also, Lord, just uh, thank you for all the caring organisations and uh, and doctors and nurses and all our hospitals. We thank you, Lord, that they are so brave and willing to do uh, what they do. But we do specifically offer to you care homes at this time, Lord, because uh, we know uh, from the stats that many more people have died in care homes and it must be so hard for those who are caring for these people. Their hearts must break so often. And so, Lord, we just pray for them as well, that you would give them courage and strength to keep going in these most difficult of times. Amen. And oh Lord, we do pray uh, for our, our benefits, Lord. Uh, we do pray as we begin to think about coming out of lockdown. Uh, I do pray for myself and Matthew and all the rest of the leadership uh, groups and people and teams. We just pray, Lord, that you will also give us great wisdom uh, as we seek to uh, work out the best way forward uh, as a benefit as we move into this, into this possibly new era. And so, Lord, I just pray for, for great wisdom upon myself uh, and Matthew. Amen. And so, gracious Father, we just offer to you now as we bring our prayers to a conclusion. Uh, those who are unknown to us, who are, are unwell, particularly those who have been ill because of this coronavirus. We also offer to you, Lord, those who are perhaps struggling in their minds through depression because of all this, this isolation. Well, Lord, as we've said, this is unusual times. And so, Father, I just pray for those who are feeling lonely, who are feeling isolated at this time, that they will have a sense of your love and power. And so, gracious Heavenly Father, we offer these prayers to you now in your holy name. Amen. Well, God bless you all. Uh, and until next time. Amen.